DeepSeek R1 has improved itself. It was able to achieve a 2x improvement in speed, completely discovered by itself. We are in the era of self-improving AI. This is right before we hit the intelligence explosion. Do you remember this graph? I've shown it quite a bit. At the point at which AI can reach PhD level intelligence and actually discover new knowledge, that's the point at which we have recursive self-improvement and hit the intelligence explosion. We are here now. The O1 model, the O3 model, DeepSeek R1, these are PhD level intelligence models and they are starting to recursively self-improve. The second incredible discovery that I'm gonna show you at the end of the video is by another team which was able to achieve the aha moment from the deep seek paper for just three dollars just a few days ago i posted about a phd from berkeley who was able to achieve the aha moment for thirty dollars we now have a 10x reduction at three dollars to achieve the aha moment that learning moment from the deep seek r1 model so i'm going to show you both of these right now all right first let me show you how deep seek r1 was able to improve itself to achieve a 2x speed improvement. This is Simon Willison's blog, and here he talks about a 2x improvement in speed, and I'll get a little bit into the details, but that's not the point right here. The point is, surprisingly, 99% of the code in this PR was written by DeepSeek R1. The person who was able to do this simply prompted the model, and the model figured out how to improve itself. The only thing I do is to develop tests and write prompts with some trials and errors. And they actually shared the entire exchange between the prompter and DeepSeek R1. But listen to this. I've been seeing some very promising results from DeepSeek R1 for code as well. Here's a recent transcript where I used it to rewrite the LLM grok.py plugin to imitate the cache model JSON pattern used by LLM mistral.py resulting in this PR. So that is again, DeepSeek R1 writing incredible code. I tried the same thing against O1, but I think DeepSeek R1 did better. Now, let me show you some of these prompts. So here's the gist of what actually happened. This is really funny. What is your setup? Just chat.deepseek.com free with prompts adapted from this gist. I'm gonna link this down below. And according to this person, it took around three to five minutes per response. So it really did do a lot of thinking. And here is the iterative loop that this person used with DeepSeek. So basically the problem description, what you want them to accomplish, then here is your last failed attempt improved from this and then paste the last generated code here. So here's prompt number one. Your task is to convert a given C++ ARM Neon SIMD to Wasm SIMD. And basically what this is doing is improving the way that parallel processing works with the ARM chip architecture. And so it is given a bunch of existing code, which you're seeing here. I mean, this is hardcore code. And then here is the function that you need to convert, and it gives it a bunch more code. And you must start your code with, there it is. And here's prompt two. And with these prompts, the model was able to look for optimizations to run itself faster. Pretty amazing. And here's another example by the same guy where he basically gives a prompt some code and says improve. And you can actually see the chain of thought here. So, okay, I need to implement the same pattern as Mistral. First, looking at the Mistral code, there's a function called refresh model. So for Grok, I'll do something similar. And then at the very end, we have the code and it worked. It is pretty stunning. Now imagine a hundred of these, a thousand of these agents running autonomously, consistently looking for ways to improve. If that is not the hard takeoff point, I don't know what is. Again, referencing this graph. Here, this is GPT-4, a smart high schooler. We are well past that at GPT-4.0, 01, 03 mini, and 03 coming out soon. And how about deep research, which really beats many PhDs at actually doing new knowledge discovery and synthesis. And so we are right here, automated AI research. Once we have the ability to do this automated AI research, that is when we hit super intelligence. And it feels like we're just about to reach that point. Now, I'm a little bit conflicted because some of the smartest people in AI say that this takeoff is not going to be an instant overnight thing. It's going to be more gradual than that. But at the same time, looking at that chart I just showed you, 
it kind of looks like we're going to see this binary point at which we just have this hard takeoff. Now, this is Jan LeCun, head of AI research at Meta, and look what he just said. The emergence of AGI, whatever your definition, will not be an event, it will be progressive. And so it's going to be more like if you're watching it directly, you're not going to see the monumental or big leap progress that you might be expecting. But if you look away for a second and then look back, you might see it. He also says once it appears somewhere, it will be reproduced by many in a relatively short time. Now, if AI and all of these innovations are behind the walls of closed source companies like OpenAI, then we probably wouldn't have this. However, with open source, we accelerate the ability for everybody to achieve it. And again, that is why the DeepSeek R1 drop was so important. It basically allowed open source to jump ahead about three to six months. Now, Sam Altman, in reference to the DeepSeek R1 model, said this in a Reddit AMA. It's a very good model. We will produce better models, but we will maintain less of a lead than we did in previous years. So now we have self-improving artificial intelligence. And just a few days ago, I talked about how a Berkeley PhD was able to recreate the thinking ability of a model for just $30, essentially using the same technique as DeepSeek R1, but applied to a very narrow use case. And now we have another example by another team who is able to reproduce that aha moment for just $3. And this was less than a week later. This is Lang Chen, and he says, excited to introduce R1V. So this is using the exact same technique as the Berkeley PhD and as DeepSeek R1. We use reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards to incentivize VLMs to learn general counting abilities. That is the key, reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards. So it works incredibly well when you have a very well-defined reward function. That means that there has to be a known answer to whatever the question or the problem is. So two plus two equals four. But what's your favorite color does not have a defined answer. It is just opinion. So there's no way to use reinforcement learning on that. That is why these techniques work so well on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. All four of those categories have a defined input and a defined output, a question and an answer. And you can train the model to know when they're right and when they're wrong. And this is where you get the emergent behavior of thinking. And you could do so on a tiny model in a very narrow use case for just a few dollars now. And it's completely open source. So I'm gonna drop this link in the description below as well. So look at this, two billion parameter model surpasses the 72 billion parameter model with only 100 training steps, costing less than $3, the project will be fully open source. So it is specifically just a counting ability. Now, you might think, okay, well, that's pretty basic. What good is that? But imagine this. It seems like the direction we're headed is to have a ton of these very small, very, very small models with a core base intelligence. And it seems like the minimum seems to be around 1.5 billion parameters. And then they are all using this reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards to get good at one particular thing. And then imagine you had a model router that chose the right model in the moment based on your prompt. That is possibly the future that we're heading towards. No more massive generalized models, or maybe there will be, but it's not going to be the only way to achieve this. It's really taking these tiny models that anybody can create from open source and then building on top of them and making them really good at these narrow use cases. And so here are the results. A hundred steps. They took the two billion parameter model from 53% accuracy on this counting problem all the way up to 99%. Basically perfect. Beating the 72 billion parameter at 94%. This is pretty amazing. And here's the open source project right here. You can play with it yourself. You can try it yourself. By the way, should I do this? Should I make a tutorial video on training one of these tiny models to be really good at one thing and trying to elicit that thinking behavior from a tiny model? Let me know in the comments. Now, here's the vision of what they're trying to accomplish with R1V. We are building a general framework for RLVR, so that's reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards in VLM. And so imagine just being able to take this off the shelf and apply it to any model you want and any use case you want as long as there is a verifiable reward. 
So there it is. Everybody in the open source community was now able to see what worked so well for DeepSeekR1 and reproduce it, innovate on it, extend it, and that's the power of open source. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.